Hey guys, it's Claire. So for this week's assignment, we were supposed to create a seven to nine minute video of us discussing the, these three specific uh, topics, which are um, number one, defining the purpose of performance-based assessments and like what they are and how they're also known as performance assessments. They can go as authentic assessments and authentic performance assessments. Number two, I'll be discussing the types of assessments to include, but not limited to contracts, interviews, games, work samples, project portfolios, directed assignments, etc. And then the third thing we'll be talking about will be the advantages of performance based assessments. So, for how these are defined from our textbook, performance assessment or performance based assessments are defined in the glossary as an assessment of development and or learning that is based on the child's natural performance rather than on contrived tests or tasks. And one specific example that I have tried in the past would be doing like interviews by working one-on-one -on -one with the children I had the privilege of working with as a nanny. For example, going over colors with them and numbers with them or reading a book with them and ask them what the character's name was and what happened again in the book, you know? And <clears throat> like the purpose of these is that, let's open my notes really quick. The purpose of these assessments, um, it, you know, kind of varies. It could be that in general, it's supposed to measure like the student's ability to apply like a certain skill set or um, apply knowledge learned in a certain unit or like what kind of thing that they are studying. Um, but most likely that's about the task challenges students use um, to like, in order to use like their higher thinking skills to create or complete like a certain uh, process. And, you know, and the task could range from anything from like a simple like short answer thing to, you know, a more in-depth answer for a question. Um, yeah. Uh, most of the assessments require students to complete a task that closely shows the responsibilities of a professional. And uh, assessments are used also to support learning, identify the, um, whether or not a student has special needs, to check for accountability, and monitor the students. So, for the types of assessments to include but not limited to, we are going to be discussing, you know, the interviews and contracts, all that good stuff. Alright, getting back into it. So, for the types of assessments, um, you know, we could go over the portfolio, portfolios, my bad. Um, you, as a teacher, you can have the students select you know, items that they feel represents their best work to include in their own portfolio. And it's like the benefit of this is that it's something that, that grows over time and that they can, you know, it's not just completed and forgotten. They can like go back and look at it and see like how much they've like improved on something, which is super cool. I remember always having those in elementary school and I always thought it was so cool to like look at it. Even in college, at, um, before I went to Aspen, like we at my college, you know, we had like a writing class and you'd be able to look at your portfolio and see like how far you improved like over the semester. It was really cool. So I think it's very helpful for students to have. And, uh, you know, also then in the portfolios, you know, there's reflections in there where the students can take note of their growth. The next is projects and projects are usually typically used by, you know, teachers as performance-based activities. They can include anything from, you know, having uh, something that's like an art-based, like, um, representation of the information that the kids have learned, or it could be a research paper. Um, the projects might have the students, you know, apply their skills and knowledge while completing the assigned tasks, and they could be, you know, anything from, like, a higher level of creativity, like, whatever works for the student. They might be asked to, you know, also create like a diagram or a map or a report then the teachers can have either the students like work like you know either in groups or independently 
they could also use um, keep like a notebook or a journal and jot down stuff for their to be like their performance based assessment. And the teachers might also require you know students to complete the journal entries. I know we had to do that for um, a book report when we were in college. It, I did it on the Freedom Writers and we had to like journal each day but like what we read and what the chapters and then use it as like a project at the end of the semester. But yeah, I think that's a great way to have the kids in, um, participate and include that in there. So there are many advantages to performance-based assessments, which are um, this type of assessment has many advantages. Uh, you can It has the flexibility, it has authentic assessment ability, student choice, active student engagement, direct observation of student ability. And there's also disadvantages though of this, which is like while it does have a lot of um, positive, positive advantages, it says, well, performance assessments are important in creating a holistic look at the overall student's, you know, outcome performance. These assessments can't always necessarily be used in the same way as standardized uh, testing. Because you can't just, re um, the performance assessments often rely only on a specific skill set of the student, such as creativity, flexibility, or willingness to engage in, like, you know, public speaking. Performance-based assessments may have disadvantages for students who may not feel overly creative or willing to present their knowledge to a large group of people because, you know, whether they're shy or whatever. Um, it also can be very time-consuming. It can be costly. Results can be subjective. It also really relies on the student's, like, drive to succeed at it.